stealth. The final frontier. The oh no, this is the wrong script. Uh, oh god, where are we? Yes, hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today we are taking a look at stealth, because just as in real world combat, stealth also has a part to play in BD Armoury, although here it's more sort of making sure your opponents can't get away their radar guided missiles, meaning they uh, get to sort of close range laden down with those uh, with those AMRAMs, making it more difficult to turn, meaning you can just fly in and shred them easily, as my own Cyclones found out here in this match against the XF1 Gladius, the uh, the challenge champion of Season 3 of Fighter Subscriber. The Gladius was the first properly stealth orientated craft, or stealth oriented craft for my American friends, that I ever received for Fighter Subscriber, and it's a trick it did very, very well, only losing out in its very final fight to uh, Lekadlak Slapter to, um, to miss out on being crowned the knockout champion as well. Uh, since then, uh, the way BD Army handles stealth characteristics has changed a lot. Nowadays, it only performs this trick really because of its small size and those, uh, those two ECM jammers. Today then, we're going to take a look at how BD Armoury does handle stealth, as well as take a look at my own attempt at a stealth fighter, which I built in a recent Smith Builds livestream. Back in the space plane hangar with the Gladius, and yeah, as I mentioned, the way BD Armoury handles stealth has changed quite a lot. It used to be that it would just measure the size of the craft, as determined from the three traditional isometric orthogonal uh, projections, or put more simply, how big it looks from the front side and top. And would then take an average of it, and that is the radar cross section the uh, the mod would use um, during flight. But yes, I did a live stream where I was going to build a stealth craft, and I thought it still worked the same way, and I was going to try and outdo this. Um, and then I received the bad news from some of my subscribers in the know that no, the way BD Armory has handled stealth has changed quite a lot, um, as it was described to me. Think the F one seventeen. Um, so I had to basically learn as I went and just try and make the stealthiest thing I could. It didn't go badly in the end. Um, but yeah, generally just things like right angles and um, exposed fuselage like that and big fins sticking straight up, weapons especially, they're, um, they're killers in that regard. If we bring up the little radar cross section, which you can access from this button here, you can see the worst three aspects here. And yeah, anything that lights up bright white or light grey, that's a source of massive radar emissions and that's something you want to try to minimise. There is a lot of trial and error, just tweaking the angles, hiding things with wing sections, uh, moving it slightly backwards, slightly forwards, checking the radar cross section again. Uh, the other thing you might want to do is, um, to get an idea of how stealthy your craft will be in flight, is start with the landing gear retracted because you don't tend to have your landing gear down for most of a dogfight. Now, if you look at the radar cross section, we're down to 13.81, which uh, which isn't bad, but we can still see, yeah, just the the exposed fuselage, those weapons really lighting it up. Um, but in the end, I did manage to bluff my way through it, and we did end up with something pretty stealthy. Here's the fruit of those live stream labors, and it's um, it, angular. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, if you want to see the live stream where I build this, I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, be warned, it's about the dullest live stream I've ever done. <laughs> I think maybe come second place to that second DCS live stream I did. Yeah, it's just a lot of me being very focused on just building this and getting the uh, the radar cross section down. We did quite well. Uh, 6.95. Um, also on the uh, this little radar cross section. Thing. You can pick different uh, different radars to test your craft against. This is the stand. That's the standard um, conical nose-mounted radar you get. But if you look at these little windows, it's mostly black. I mean, there's very little sort of white. I mean, there's little bits of light grey-ish white kind of stuff there, but mostly black. And that's the whole thing. Most of the live stream was just me going and seeing. What, well, first of all, it was me trying to get to grips with the concepts and then trying to see what was black and trying to um, cover it up with these angled wing sections and then just moving things about. I mean, if you do bring that back up, you can see there's this little seam along the side of the craft where we've got these, uh, these two wing sections coming together. And one of the things I did was just sort of push these two wings together a little bit to minimise that. That actually saved a surprising amount. Um, Weaponry, I've hidden uh, yeah, two of these Gal 22s and a pair of the Sidewinders there. I've got these um, Ordnance Bays, I've used that. 
without the weaponry, this thing was, I think it's like 6.11. Uh, I just did to try, did try attaching an ECM jammer to this, but my god, the, uh, the radar cross-section just ballooned instantly. If you're wondering if this would be legal in Fighter Subscriber, no, no it wouldn't. I have been, like, working on a Fighter Subscriber legal version, but that's, uh, that's not ready yet. Um, but yeah, there's also a lot of just tweaking things, tweaking angles, and like even things like just these little countermeasure dispensers, just tweaking the, uh, like these two on the bottom particularly, just tweaking the position of those and just like tweak it a little bit, move it a little bit, see what the radar cross section is, tweak it a little bit more, see what the radar cross section is. It, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a long, tedious business, but I'm quite happy with what we've got. So, um, yeah, let's get into a dogfight and see if this stealth brings it any advantages. So three of these screeches with our little patron kerbals versus three of my Cyclone F2s, very quickly becoming my almost benchmarking aircraft. And these things have a severe case of the turning bug, so I'm going to have to get this going pretty quickly. I think what I'm going to do is set the uh, start competition distance out to 15,000 just to actually see what sort of advantage, because obviously it's going to be at longer range. Um, uh, so let's, yeah, let's get this going. I may have to redo this a few times, depending on how the turning bug affects things. Let's, let's give this a go. Well, that took a little while longer than usual, and yeah, they all took off fine, so I needn't have been worried. Now, with this weapons bay deployed, that is going to massively increase the distance at which these craft can lock and track onto them. Not close enough yet, though, apparently. Yeah. Absolutely nothing at the moment. Huh. Oh, they are having to sort of break low and dodge. The, uh, the Screech is closing to within 10 kilometers now. They are only set up for one missile per target, so they can't really keep them on the back foot as effectively as they would be able to. Still, still the Cyclones have not gotten any of their missiles away. They are going to get into gun range very heavily laden with missiles. Yeah, having to pop counter motion. Now they can lock on. It's only with the uh, it's only when they get into Sidewinder range that they can do this. Now, I'm not sure how well they're going to perform now because the Screeches haven't been tuned. Which I sort of just realised I was as I was setting up this fight. Maybe should have done that. I think, I think though we can be confident in saying that the stealth has generally sort of worked. I'm just going to put on the dogfight cam. And now, if only I had actually. Oh, one of the cyclones takes a pretty heavy hit. These are inc now these are incredible. Um, just flying them manually. But uh, how the AI gets on with them is going to be another matter entirely. Bryce Kerman trying to line up a shot goes for the sidewinder. The uh, the cyclones countermeasures make short work of it. Um, yeah, and likewise with the cyclone trying to lock on to Bryce. Ah, uh, where are we? So obviously Bryce Kerman's craft has been damaged. Ghosty Kerman trying to line up guns and with these things not. Oh come on! Oh come on! That that is you, you cannot get a better opportunity than that. Surely. I think, as well as these stealth having provided a reasonably significant advantage, I think I'm justified in saying the screeches are also kind of on top, but that's that's not necessarily related to the stealth, and that's sort of what we're looking at. Come on, Ghosty. I think that's mainly because this thing's got an absolute load of wing area. Um, as I said, would not be fighter subscriber legal, but the uh, the fighter subscriber legal version isn't quite done yet. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, it's beautiful. That cyclone has taken a nose job by the looks of things. Um, yes. So the sum total of damage so far is two craft crash into each other. That's that's going to make things more interesting. It looks like the screech came off worse. There was a screech and a cyclone crashing into each other. Yeah, Ghosty Kerman is in a lot of trouble, and if the respective cyclone... I'm assuming that's that, judging by how messed up the wings are. Yeah. Neither of those are having a good time of it. God, this is going on for ages! 
Oh my god, I think that's one of the Cyclones taking a reasonably heavy hit. Yeah, I think it was that one. Still, still nobody able to do that fatal bit of damage. Oh my god, something's just paused. One of the screeches has crashed. I'm assuming that was the heavily damaged one. So now it is advantage Cyclones. Josh Kerman has one of the screeches in his sights. Oh, manages to get some gun far away, get some damage in. Press Kerman and one of the Cyclones in a joust again. That looks like that was a lot of damage. Yes, Leg of Lack Kerman in a bit of trouble now. Yeah, has lost all thrust. Are these are these craft just running out of fuel now? No, Ion Kerman, Ion Kerman's in a lot of trouble as well. It looks like the Screechers have eventually managed to make their... Yeah, everybody's out of fuel. Everybody is out of fuel. <laughs> I'm prepared to go on record and say I think if I'd have actually tuned these, that would have been victory for the... Might still be victory for the Screechers, to be quite honest. Ion Kerman is just expertly plucked out of the air. That was a weird fight. Hang on, no, GT Kerman's still got some fuel. It is a legitimate victory for the Screeches. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was a weird one. Okay. But, and now, now it runs out of fuel. Yeah, as I said, I think if I'd have actually tuned these better, it might, yeah, they would have won a far easier victory. But the stealth worked. The stealth worked. The, the Cyclones were unable to get the lock on until they were very, very close. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's, there's sort of one more scenario I want to test with this before we're done. So we're here in the ground attack variant of my Screech approaching the KSC, because I thought it'd be important to do some sort of ground attack scenario, because that's kind of going to be the F-35's bread and butter. Um... Yeah, the uh, the screech is now within the range of the uh, the radar of this little um, surface-to-air missile unit. Certainly within range of these missiles, I think that's thirty kilometers. Um, as for the um, as for the screech itself, I do have uh, guard mode should be on. Guard mode is on, so when it's within range, it should target uh, the uh, the little surface-to-air missile unit and fire on it with some of its selection of surface-to-air weaponry. Service to air weaponry doesn't have a great range on it. I think the Hellfire is the best that can go from eight kilometers. Um, the Maverick, I thought the Maverick would be better, but that's set to a maximum of five kilometers. That's sort of hard coded into the game. So that's, yeah, that's tricky. We're just going to have to see how close we can get before, uh, before we're seen. How are we doing? Getting into 11 kilometers. Hmm. Still absolutely nothing. Ten kilometers. Okay, just needs two more kilometers, and then we're within range of the Hellfires. Oh, no! No, here comes the missile. It can detect the missile, but not the craft itself. Huh. So we just hang around here at the eight kilometer mark. Yeah. And there's pretty much nothing this graph can do. It can't. It can't track. It can't track the screech. <laughs> Enjoy your little present. Here it comes. Here it comes. Please say it's. Yeah, there we go. I thought it was going to miss for a second. Beautiful. And now, of course, we can just follow that in. Uh, where are we? Yeah, missiles per target. Worse, whack that up. No point in. Uh, no point in saving them anymore. So yeah, the joys of stealth in KSP. As I say, it is a bit of an arse ache to, um, to actually set it all up and get a decent stealth aircraft. And I will have to test out the, um, I will have to test out the <laughs> fighter subscriber legal version. Well, that just disappeared from the vessel switcher. Um, and also I'll have to tune this. Yeah, there's lots more I can do to play about with stealth. And if you'd like to see that, please, uh, please let me know. But that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed. If you have and you haven't already, then uh, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting on the video, uh, maybe following me on Twitter, possibly getting involved with the Discord, great KSP and BD Armoury community on there, and more besides. All those links in the description, as are links to uh, not only the live stream where I built this, as I said, but also the uh, the Patreon and the PayPal. 
if you'd like to help support the channel, you too can get your own, your own little Patreon Kerbal, like Steep Kerman here, the other Kerbals I've been using, as well as the name at the end of the videos, access to the Patreon only Discord, some new stuff, it's looking increasingly unlikely that I'll actually get around to, but I'm not giving up hope. I am not giving up hope. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back soon with some more BD Armory, and who knows, in the near future, possibly with some more stealth. If you want a copy of this craft, by the way, just uh, email me or DM me on the Discord. Probably best DM me on the Discord, actually. But um, yes, more BD Armory. Until then, though, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.